This is how we get fat inside the mitochondria is via carnitine. So very important, right? So if we zoom out here, we have energy out here, fat, we get it inside via the carnitine shuttle. Super important there. And then you see carbs, right? Glucose, other sugars. We go pyruvate to lactate and we need, guess what? B vitamins. So if we're putting in lots and lots of refined processed sugar and we're insulin resistant, we can actually deplete B vitamins and we can actually deplete a lot of magnesium and other nutrients downstream. So this is really important. Too much carbs, too much sugar, especially if you're insulin resistant and you're putting on weight due to too much carbs, um, that's going to be a problem and you're going to deplete nutrients. Now, then we have proteins, amino acids. Uh, these all get converted downstream. We also need B vitamins to support that. Now, the difference is if you're eating high quality protein, guess what? You're getting good quality B vitamins in that protein. If you're doing a lot of refined processed sugar, guess what? You're not getting vitamins and nutrients with it. So carbohydrates, it's possible to eat a lot of empty carbs that are actually going to deplete your nutrient levels. Protein, not as much if it's grass-fed and organic, right? Now, really, you're taking all these nutrients, fats, carbs, and proteins. You're converting them into acetyl-CoA. Okay, you're converting it to acetyl-CoA. And again, we spit off beta-hydroxybutyrate. What's that? That's a ketone. Now, this is important. If we keep our carbs in check, we, we can use ketones for fuel. So this is a really important fuel source for people that are going to be lower carb because we're going to be more keto adapted. We're going to be able to use that. And then you can see here that acetyl-CoA runs around the Krebs cycle twice. We go two turns. Guess what we need? Cysteine, amino acid, iron, really important. So if you're a female, you have heavy bleeding, you're estrogen dominant, you have heavy bleeding, that's going to affect energy. Um, magnesium, manganese, B vitamins, lipoic acid, magnesium, B vitamins, B vitamins, tyrosine, phenylalanine, aspartate, um, glycine, histidine, arginine, proline, glycine, valine, methionine, right? These are all amino acids over here. So we need amino acids to run these systems. We need B vitamins, we need magnesium. And then of course, once we pump these things around, here's our NADH and then our FADH should be there somewhere as well. So here, NADH, they may not, they may just be oversimplifying it, not showing it, but we have NADH here and we should have an FADH2 coming in. This all goes right into, guess what? This is the electron transport chain and beta fatty acid oxidation right there, right? This is now, now hydroxymethylglutarate. This is CoQ10. This is where CoQ10 comes in and this is where it runs through the electron transport chain and uh, burning fat for fuel, and we generate our 36 to 38 ATP from all these three sources, one, two, and three. And so that's what's happening in your mitochondria. And so just to kind of highlight, macronutrients, fats, protein, carbs, very important. Two, don't junk it up with all the toxins that you mentioned. And then of course, making sure we can break down protein, make sure we're getting enough iron, making sure we're not anemic, right? All of those things kind of flow into allowing all these pathways to, to work optimally. That's amazing. I love the breakdown of that. The visual is super helpful. So just to clarify a little bit. So for women out there, you're saying that if having heavy menstruation, they have low iron. It's not just the the low iron that we assume is creating like a low oxygenation. You're, you're showing here the low iron is literally creating a mitochondrial deficit. Correct. Absolutely. Because you're not getting the oxygen in, right? If we go back to here, right? Mitochondria, what do we need to get into the mitochondria? Oxygen. What's one of the big carrying capacities for oxygen in the body? Hemoglobin, and then iron affects hemoglobin and red blood cells, right? Hemoglobin is part of the red blood cell carrying capacity, and we need the iron to really keep the hemoglobin levels up so it can carry enough oxygen. Wow. So there's why you're tired. Could be, yep. On, and then, of course, on all, all of the other nutrients play a role, not enough of the amino acids. The only uh, issue with this graph, any biochemists that are looking on, I think the only thing it's missing is really the FADH2. So it should, so all these things, they're just reducing compounds. Really, the whole goal of this Krebs cycle to run is just grabbing hydrogens. And then once we grab these hydrogens, um, these things get cleaved off, and then it, it generates ATP. What's happening there? And all these things like hydroxymethylglutarate, these are, right, these are all driven through CoQ10, right? We need CoQ10 to make that happen.